Hey there, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. This is a pay request from John, the Zero Cool. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, video game playthroughs, PayPal is usually the best bet. Uh, the family and friends option is the best way to go with that. Or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, okay, I want to keep talking. Just if I keep talking more for 20 minutes, I can just upload it and not talk about the actual movie. And he wanted me to rewatch this to see if my opinions of it have changed. Which I'm perfectly fine with that. Please feel free. Anyone that wants to do that, that could absolutely be requested as well. I don't mind that. I know my opinion has not changed on this. <sighs> this film sucks. It sucks. You see the tired look on my face. That's what you did watching the film is his look on your face. And my face and his face and their face. And most people's faces that see this movie, this is the look they get. If it's not anger, if it's not mad, it's at least this face. You get some guy named Simon McCoy who has never done anything before. Which, why would you get this doobie? Maybe should, maybe spoken doobies. I don't know what he was doing. To direct your big IP movie revival reboot. Did a guy that has not done anything, never proven himself, what has he done? He could have worked at a Ben and Jerry's. He could have worked at a foot massager. He could have been one of the crash test dummies, the band, or those guys in those commercials. No one knows. And then... These people thought he did such a good job, he's coming back for the sequel. If he's back for the sequel, why the hell would I want to watch the sequel? To see more of the bad? Mortal Kombat. Bull. Mortal Kombat is about a tournament. There's no tournament in the movie. Your characters stink. Special effects, at times, not the greatest. The fight scenes, which should be an essential part of a Mortal Kombat movie, horrible, terrible, badly choreographed, quick cuts, nothing that remotely, well, aside from one or two fatalities, there's not much memorable in them. Most of the fights you will forget. In terms of what the fight was. The choreography. 1995's film did that. Much better. Because. However I feel about Paul W. Sanderson nowadays. At that time he knew. Okay Robin Shaw, You know about. Martial arts. There was not as many fight scenes in that movie. And then they did a test screening and said, hey, we want more fights. So they added more fights. I think the fight between him and Reptile was added. There might have been one more. I can't think of it. But it's like, hey, let's improve on this. Listen to the audience. And it worked out for them. And that movie's still a banger. Yeah, the CGI isn't the best, but it's 1995, but... Why that film is never done in special edition, I have no clue. But anyway, that's a whole other topic, other day. The characters, Zub Zero, you see a bit of him in the beginning. Then, I guess he's one of the more prominent villainous characters compared to the other characters of this movie. Scorpion, he's in the beginning, he gets killed, doesn't appear until the very end of the film. That to do, and he needs help. Scorpion doesn't need help, but no, he needs help in this movie. Nah, give me Scorpion's Revenge, the anime movie, any day. Lutane, 
barely a character. Even though he was kind of the main focus of Mortal Kombat, he's barely a thing in this. Johnny Cage, not in the movie. He's going to be in the sequel, played by Carl Urban, but they'll, I'm sure they'll screw that up. Sonya, barely anything. And that's the thing, a lot of this Sonya, Jax, Liu Kang, there's no sense of personalities, no sense of actual character in terms of banter, humor, or very remote, and the few bits there are, not memorable at all. At all. You can look at the 1995 film, you can look at Lyndon Ashby, you can look at Robin Chow, and you go, you know what, I get a sense of who those characters are. Johnny Cage, this is when you fall down. I can't work with these people. The funny jokes that he was saying, the funny ways that he's reacting to our world, like how we would act. I'm in a place I can't recognize or I don't like. Everyone here wants to tip my ass. I feel like I'm in high school again. <laughs> I'm back in high school. Robin Chow, he did his backstory with the death of his brother and him being angry, wanting to get revenge, but then realizing he, he's got to try to overcome his guilt. There's an actual character arc for him. Sonia, her little bits of banter with Johnny Cage. And they all have like they seem to have a bit more personality in their acting. Here, everyone's like very bland and very generic and very boring. <sighs> the music sucks. It's not memorable. It's more combat. How do you even screw up the theme in this? Why does the rest of the score sound so damn forgettable? Oh, it's got some blood and gore. I don't care. Does it end save the movie? And of course, Cole. Who the hell is Cole? Cole Yun? Who cares? Who knows who cares? Who the hell are you? Who the fuck is Cole Yun? I said that so many times in that original review, and I'm still asking it. Who the hell is he? What the hell is he? Why is he here? Why is he in the movie? Why? With all the characters you have throughout all of the video games of Mortal Kombat, it's not like there's just one or two. There's a lot of them. If you don't want to have Liu Kang as the lead again, you can have Johnny Cage. You can have Sub-Zero as the good guy. You can have... What the hell was that character name? Striker, the, the one with Baton... And he was in like the third one. I forgot his name. Hell, you have, I'd rather have him be the, the lead. Why this guy that you just... Your fan fiction... Mr. Sue character. Why? No one cared about him. And no one liked him. And I'm sorry, the actor did a terrible job. Maybe he's a good martial artist in real life. They definitely didn't showcase a lot of that in this. And he was bland. He was boring. He was generic. No one cared about him or his literal plot armor. Goro was pretty much a jobber in this. Shane Sun looked bored as hell. His hair more had more life to him than his, per, than his acting or personality. His hair had more life. Raiden, I swear to God, you need subtitles on the guy. Because I don't understand what the hell he was saying. What? Kazundite? Excuse me? Baking powder? What did you say? Yeah, let's make Shane Sun very boring. Let's make Raiden barely understand what he's saying and very boring. Let's make Tano the most interesting character personality wise. So you have the beginning where Sub Zero is attacking Scorpion's village. His wife and kid get killed. 
he fights Scorpion. This is, of course, before the, the big old suits. Scorpion does kill some bad guy. He kills some people, some bad guys, and trying to take out his village. But the fight with Sub Zero didn't get these quick cuts, and this director obviously has never done action before. Because he's done nothing before. So the way it cuts so quickly, and it'll be like, they're fighting, then you have a shot like he's way far away, then up close, then way far away, which I have no idea why they do that, why he did that. That's not the right, it's not a good way of shooting it. Because you're in the midst of it, then you're so far away, you're ready to have a telescope, a periscope. doesn't have moments to really get that impact yeah moment not a lot of them I'm not going to say none but not a lot of them and again let's make a more common movie not about a tournament this is before the tournament and we're into you know after that opening you introduce the Cole who the hell is he why is he here well to be the eyes of the audience what audience do you think is watching this movie? The regular person, I bet if they're in the eyes of a Johnny Cage, a Lou Kane, they're going to be able to, whoever, they're going to be able to understand by storytelling. Any character, you could be the eyes of the viewer by writing a movie worth a shit. God forbid. So Kuyun, completely useless, completely pointless, other than for this plot armor, where he literally has plot armor. It's okay, we need to have someone who is the ancestor of Scorpion. Because when we have it at the beginning, we don't have him show up at the end. How we don't do that? Well, we don't create Cole. I'm like, you know what? Then rewrite the script and rewrite the way you have Scorpion Sub-Zero implemented in there. Because this cold character is a big mistake. And it was. I've never seen a single person say they like they enjoy that character. And he's the main guy. And what, to see a sequel to see more of him? The continued adventures of Cole? Yun? Oh, I'm sure people are gun over for that. So I guess his character arc is that he loses in fights until now he can win at fights because he got superpowers. So Jax, which is funny, he calls himself Jax when technically his name is Jackson. So the, I guess the writer was so stupid he didn't realize that his name is Jackson. He said, hey, my name is Jax. I'm like, no, your name is Jackson. Some people call you Jax, but your name is Jackson. But I guess he's like, I'm just gonna. Anytime I approach people, I'm just, I'm just gonna say my nickname. And yes, this is the movie where you have the great piece of writing where Jack saw Kolyan lose, then sees, hey, I'm interested in that. What's that tattoo thing? He was born with it. What does you what does that mean? It means it's a birthmark. Oh, really? He was born with it? I thought it was Maybelline. <sighs> he was born with it. What do you mean? It means it's a birthmark. No, I thought it was a I thought it was a semen stain. I thought it was crotch rot. I thought he had syphilis. I thought he had a bunch of STDs. He, had, I'm sorry. I thought he had AIDS. That's what should be the answer. Oh, I thought he had AIDS. Oh, and that gets in the whole thing. And what is that called? The Arcana. I think this was called the, the these tattoos you get, the Arcana. Apparently the whole deal with these 
you have the ever there's a tournament if you win 10 tournaments you get the realm bad guys have won, won nine there's gonna be a tenth one so now they're gonna send these off to the heroes of earth which makes me wonder what they'll happen to the nine other times <laughs> that you guys lost but anyway See, that's what you're wondering. You're wondering what happened to the nine other times. So we're going to send them off and you, Magic Tattoo, you find the heroes. But if you accidentally kill one or you purposely kill one, you get the mark. So what if you accidentally hit someone with a car? Do you then get their mark? I think someone even says that's what happened to them. Oh, yeah. I, at least said Kano, he killed someone and then got the mark. I guess that guy wasn't much of a hero if Kano was able to kill him and get the mark. But... That's such a dumb thing, like... To easily get these tattoos. Again, so... Let's say I'm driving one night and I'm drunk and then, oh, whoops, the car flips. I survived, but this guy died. This guy's tattoo falls onto me. Now I have to fight for Earth? Okay. I mean, that's kind of a weird way of doing business, isn't it? You hear those chick, those roosters in the background? They're confused too. This is a farm, middle of nowhere. The roosters, they're confused by this. They're trying to ask questions. I don't got the answers. I can't tell you why. Why even write that into the script? Why? It's like we got to find a way as to why they have superpowers. The audience for this ain't going to give a crap about that. You just made something more... Uh, not confu confusing or just more... Like, what? what? They didn't need to be more company than they needed to be. See, even they're pissed. I don't blame them. So, there's a moment where Cole and his family, which the family, I... If you, if you <laughs> quiz me... To tell you one thing about Cole's family, I can't do it. You know nothing about Cole's family, so I have no idea why we're supposed to care whether they live or die at the end. I dare anyone to find one thing about them. Tell me one thing about Cole's family. I dare you. I double dare you. And so Sub-Zero decides to rise the ice or the snow and... Phew, Now, you think a cooler thing would be like to keep doing this and throw all these ice to freeze people? No, I'm going to just unleash a bunch of snowballs. Granted, it's probably like hail, ice, but it look, at times it looks like snowballs. You're just throwing a bunch of snowballs at them. Jax picks him up, drives for a bit, Sub Zero's in the way. Why he doesn't do this and, I don't know, freeze the car or anything, I don't know. Jats gets out. He allows Jats, yeah, come, come did it. You have an unexciting fight with a lack of choreography, poor editing. Jats' arms get frozen and broken off. And then throws a guy, and the guy literally is thrown and hits his head on the concrete. Now, he should be dead right then and there. Your arms are gone. Your head hit concrete like that. You're dead. But apparently he's not dead. Apparently he was alive long enough for Lutan or whoever to find him. 
bring them to the realm and do with these monks, do something to make them heal. Uh, I mean, no, there's no way he should be alive, but whatever. So while that's going on, Cole and his family, they go meet, uh, I guess he has his family somewhere, meet Sonya. Kano is chained up. This bit feels a bit rushed. It feels like, okay, wait, who's Kano and why is he chained up and what's going on and blah, blah, blah. And Sonya already knows about what's going on. She already knows about the realm. She always knows. How, I'm, I'm sitting there going, how the hell you know about this? How do you know about the realm and the magic and the tournament? How do you know about any of this? And like they try to rush it through, but it still leaves you with questions. Until finally, I guess this is reptile, but don't quote me on it. Because some invisible thing starts punching them. And imagine like a CGI body, but with an iguana head. The attack of the Deco commercial. I don't know. The 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 guy from the Deco. Deco commercial. It looked so stupid. It wasn't the greatest of CGI. It was such a lame, loose. If it's not reptile, then I don't know who it is. I think most people would assume it's reptile. Maybe it's someone else. You would hope. And it doesn't really fight. It just slashes. And it's not really a fighter. And I'm like. I know the the effect looks bad in the 1995 movie. But at least they had the right idea. That they I think shot later. But still they had the right idea. To get into a body. And then get into a fight with Lou Kane. And it's actually one of the better fights in the movie. With a great piece of. Da -na -da -na -na -na. Banana. Which I think Robin Shaw choreographed because he knows what he's doing. Because he's a good martial artist. Underrated. Should have done a lot more, Sally. But he knew what he was doing. He knew how to handle those scenes. He knew how to choreograph it. Unlike this. Cole doesn't do nothing. Sony doesn't do nothing. Kano punches rips out a heart, and then says, Kano wins. Why the, f why the hell is he saying that? Oh, because it's said in the game, but he didn't say it. The guy in the sky narrator says it. I'm Kano, I win. That's not what happens. It comes off as so cringe and so desperate. We're like the games we promise. He said Kano wins. That person said flawless victory. That person said fatality. But it comes off as awkward and no one would ever say that. Shane Son made sense for him to say it in the first movie when Sub Zero, because it's part of a tournament. And he makes the final flawless victory. Match ended. This is part of this part of the tournament. This isn't that. Tano just saying Tano wins. Like, why are you talking in the third person? Why are you saying it? Oh, Lutane gets revenge for what happened to someone. Fatality. Like, no. What the fuck they do? So after the Iguana, the Geico commercial dies, the three of them go into the desert because Tano says he knows where it's at. Why he knows, I don't know. And Lutine is randomly there in the desert. To almost be tapped by Tano, but Lutine does a fireball at him. Then he's like, hey, come with me. Why Raiden didn't just teleport him then he goes, I can't interfere. But then he can interfere. Because I can't interfere. But here's, I'm going to teleport you here. I'm going to 
teleport Shane Stone here. I can, but I can't. I can, but I can't. Make up your mind. It's like, depending on which mood he's in, Raiden can do this or can't do this. And give him subtitles. Like, this had the most boring version of these characters. So he did a lot of exposition. A fighter without a marking can never achieve arcana. Yeah, unless you hit him with a car. They train. Apparently arcana, when you have it, you could, out of the blue, have a superpower. You get a car. You get a car. You get a power. So, uh, the bad guys come in, and there's a little bit of a fighting, but then there's a standstill. There's training. Tano gets his late magic eye laser. It's a laser beam. It's better than a fireball, you pussy. Now here's the thing. He it's magic. Like he he can shoot lasers out of his eyes. Is that really a robotic eye then? It's not like you use technology to do it. Because Lutein didn't do fireballs, that's not because of technology. Sonya Blade later on can shoot those rings, it's not because of robotic technology, it's because of the magic power. So now the laser eyes, the magic power. I ask that because much later on, when Sonya Blade throws something at his face, it sizzles and it screws up like it's short circuit in. But wait a minute, isn't that your superpower? That'd be like throwing stuff on Lou Kane's arms and short circuiting or something. No. Isn't the laser magic? Just like the fireball, just like the ring, all the other stuff magic? They wouldn't short circuit, so why is his eye short circuiting? Jax, they put metal stuff on his arms, and then when he gets his power, then that is because of that, because he had metal arms there to begin with. If he, if they had shown a scene where his eye was taken out, and he put a metal eye in it to be able to see. And then because of that, it took the metal eye and became more powerful. Okay, that's not the case. But later on, it short circuits. Because they did this stupid thing to try to explain it and just made themselves more confusing. Instead of could be, yeah, you know, Sonya blinded him. Uh, but he survived. So he got this thing on his face, took a lot of surgery, and it can do crazy things like this. Could have done that, but no. Other villains they have here, they have Natara. I forget who this one guy is, I'm just going to call him Fate Batista. He's like a guy with a big hammer. He looks like a, I don't know, great value version of Batista. So I just say fake Batista. This Cabal, which I've never played him in the games. Does he, is he supposed to have this New York, Brooklyn voice? Seems like a voice very out of the blue for him. Hey, how, I can't even do a Brooklyn. I can't do New York or voice. The fucking school, come on, man! I'm talking up cabal here. What are you talking about? Forget about it. Like what the hell? Cabal's like a Brooklyn guy, ready from Jer or from Jersey or something. He's one. Of the maybe he's from. Maybe he used to be one of Sopranos. He was ready to get whacked and decided to join this. I don't know. I don't know why he sounds like one of the Sopranos. I thought it was a weird choice. 
a Goro, like the first time you see him is at a farmhouse. And he fights Cole, who literally grows plot armor, literal plot armor, and then also these sticks. Fights, cuts the hand off, shoves in Goro's eye, goes out like a jobber. I mean, yes, you just say it's more intricate fighting compared to the 1995 film, where it's just kind of dodge, a simple, you know, groin punch. But it's funny how that was done with less is more. It was more memorable. And that's the thing, is that if you can't do a choreography, then you gotta do it with some type of style or some type of character where that works because of Lyndon Ashby's performance, showcasing the good practical effects of Goro, thanks to the makeup guys at the time. Memorable lines, those are $500 sunglasses, asshole. And while no, it was not an intricate fight, but okay, Giant Cage don't use his brain, don't use his wits, take him out a different way. It's a memorable scene. Here, it's just a meh fight. Okay, you got some gore in there. Cool. If I want to see this type of movie with gore... What was that movie? Uh, God, I had it in the top of my head. I'm like, this is the real Mortal Kombat. The... Rittio. The story of Ritty. Go watch that. Because no matter how gory you are, you ain't going to be gorier than Rittio. Go watch that. Kung Lao, Taste Care, and Natara. One of the few scenes I liked. Because Kung Lao didn't really have much to do anyway, but he looked cool. I liked his outfit. I liked his hat. I liked the... Probably, I would say the best fatality is his hat is spinning like a saw and he slides her right into it so her face and her whole body gets cut in half. That's one thing I would say was nice. Nicely done. Satisfying in the blood and carnage department. But then Shane Stone grabs him, sucks his soul up. And for some reason they had to do the lutein. No. Like they alter, vo alter his voice. No. No, it just comes off as more laughable when you do that. Even in 95 movie, it's like when Johnny Cage says no and his friend, his soul gets sucked out. They didn't do the, no. they will just say it normally. Does it look less cringy? This looked a lot more cringy. So they get together. Now Cole Young is the leader. Because he, I mean, you all got powers. Well, most of you. But now everyone lists the Cole as the leader. And it's like, okay, Jax, you don't fight Fate Batista. Lou Tan, you don't fight Cabal, the Brooklyn Brawler. Uh, Sonya Blade, you don't fight your buddy Tano. I don't take on... This, uh, the, the teleborn bitch, I forget her name, and they do this thing where there, there are movies that have done this well, don't get me wrong, but it's like, okay, let's have three, four fights, and we keep cutting back and forth between all of them. Yes, there are movies that have done that well, to be fair. But, I maintain the fact it is better to not do that and film them one by one. Because when you start a fight, you're trying to tell a story within the fight, just like a wrestling match or anything else. The beginning, middle, end, the ups and downs, he's on the offense or he's on the defense, the comeback, the sucker punch, all that stuff. But when it's in the middle of it, but then it cuts away to this, then you're cutting away to the third one, 
Then you're trying to remember what happened in the first one and we're back to it and where there was in conjunction. But now we're back to this. Now we're back to the. It just. It more so takes you out of the fight scene because you're supposed to be concentrating on this, but now you're concentrating on this. It's like, oh, well, we have to do this because we can't. We don't trust you to pay attention. It's like. Like. Fuel for an ADD mind. You know when they did this a lot in the 2000s? Like Cradle to the Grave did that. Where you have Jet Li versus, versus Bartha Costas. Then you have DMX in the fight he has. Then his girlfriend has a fight. And that's a film I don't mind. But it's not like a favorite of mine. And like I said, I'm not saying you can't do it. There are... Trying to remember. I'm sure the, it's fine I say that, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But I'm sure I could think of some. But be troll low China in a way. But that's like a whole gathering. You have a bit of Dennis Dunn, and then you have like Caruso trying to get the guy off, and then then some of the other people. So, but I know that I think John Carpenter really handled that better. And really, is really like. One major fight. And it still felt like they concentrate a bit more compared to how these do it. So I just. I think having to switch back and forth to all these fights doesn't help. And then they didn't like. When da when uh, Dax. When Jazz fights Fate Batista. It's really not much to the fight. Kind of a dodge. A few punches here and there. And then. Pop his head like this is it. Retaino. A little bit of stuff will fight. Throwing some of that as again his eye sizzles, which I'm like, I thought it was a magic eye, not a robot eye, but whatever. And then takes it out with a well lawn ornament or something like that into his eye. Lutane doesn't feel like much of a fight. Like see, these fights don't seem they they go on for that long. And I remember like Lutein got cut on his wrist a bit. But I can't remember any great punches, kits, cool stuff. Oh, he tries to do that. Da, 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 da. But I thought it looked better in the 95 movie. Here it looked a lot clunkier. Like you tell a bit more it was wire work compared to the original film. Oh, even though this is a part of his revenge for the death of his cousin, Kun Lao, he burns the guy up and he says. Does it say fatality? Yeah, fatality for Kun Lao. Why the fuck would he say it like that? No, and he said revenge for Kun Lao. That was for Kun Lao. Or this was for you, cousin. That's what you say. This is for Kun Lao. This is for my cousin, whatever. Not fatality for Kun Lao. No one would ever say it that way. It just makes it sound stupid. And again, you're just being desperate to sound like the video game. It comes out the stupid. And the reason I'm not streaming is I don't want to kill my voice. Oh, and then Sony killed Kano. So she has it. Now, all these people took all this time to find their power. But apparently, as soon as she gets it, she knows her powers. And sh shoots her rings of doom. Into the teleporting uh, crazy mouth bitch. I mean, how the hell did she find her power so quick? Because she's a lady, I guess, that's why. And then Scorpion has... Cole's family that you know nothing about so you don't care uh, Cole is trying to get him out trying to fight Sub-Zero Scorpion shows out of the blue because this blade thing that Sub-Zero has and Cole grabs and see a bit of fire and also I don't care for Sub-Zero or Scorpion's costumes. I know people like them. 
but to me the colors are so muted they might as well be black like I can't see much yellow or much blue in Scorpion Sub-Zero's costumes I mean this, the color is so muted like Zack Snyder's superhero movies it's like they might as well not be those colors at all And then Scorpion, he can't even have a fight on his own. He has to be helped by Cole to do it. So they both kill him. Stop him. I guess you argue this is the best fight scene in the movie, I guess. Because you do see some of Sub-Zero's powers, like the what he does, the duplicate, ice duplicate of himself. Or he traces this ice and throws Scorpion through it. But it's a fight I really I still didn't care about. Did not even I owed our shit about. Scorpion they kill Sub Zero, Scorpion says thank you. Keep my bloodline going. Pump some babies out. I, I need to find a bus to catch. Then Shane Sun pretty much has the bad guys disappear, so I guess they're not dead. So it makes it seem as if this was all pointless. Like, this was pointless. Because the bad guys disappear and things truly don't stay dead. So, these bad guys could absolutely appear next time. So, kill them for nothing. Just makes it seem pointless. Thank you, that, that's great. And then they end and separate and then we get Cole saying bye to the gym and the idea that he's going to go find Johnny Cage. And then like a lame version of the Mortal Kombat theme. I know I spent a long time talking about but just... It was boring. It's very generic looking of a movie. I don't think the set designs, I don't think the way Outworld looks is that enticing or like how most of it is like, oh, here's a farmhouse. Here's some places that just no interesting backgrounds, backdrops. Think of the 1995 movie. Think of the scene where Scorpion dreads Johnny Cage to that hellish underworld looking place with all the skeletons. Think of our world itself with all the like mummified bodies hanging around. That's some set design that you can remember. There's some creativity. Where is that in this movie? With the backdrops, the, the environments, the characters. Kano, the a villainous, has the most personality. Cole, bland, generic. Liu Kang, bland, generic. Sonya, bland, generic. Jax, bland, generic. Everybody, bland. No personality. No zest, no life. That was a welcome addition of Raiden, Christopher Lambert's character. In the first movie. The fate of millions are upon you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and when Johnny Cage hits uh, Goro in the nuts, and Ray's like, yeah! Sorry about that. That's actually humor that's levity. Little moments peppered in to make you remember the movie. And the fight scenes suck. The port, the chore I don't know who choreographed this. They need to be fired and not be part of the... the since they're making the second one... Don't have them be a part of it, but the fact they have the same director. I read an interview. We learned from our mistakes. Okay, I want you to say what the mistakes are. List what the mistakes are. And then we'll see if you really learn them or not. It's like, yeah, we learned from our mistakes, so we'll repeat them and make a whole lot of other new mistakes. <laughs> I know some people like this film. I mean, other than gore, I mean, I can name you a hundred movies with gore in it. 
I think they knew action movies were gore in it. Go watch Ricky L. The Story of Ricky. There's a number of movies with gore. CGI or otherwise. Rambo 4 has gore. Some CG, some not. Go watch that. There's a ton of movies with gore. Rambo 4 is gorier than this movie. You watch that. That, that, I'm sorry, that wasn't worth it. Hell, that new Hellboy film that came out a few years ago had gore. Didn't save the movie for me. What else? Soundtrack? Music? Do you remember it? I don't. And I watched the damn thing again recently. The Arcana stuff, complicating the plot. Boring as position, lame characters, terrible fight scenes. It sucks. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.